Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Context is King. I'm Rebecca Brayton, and with me as always is WatchMojo founder and CEO Ashkan karbis Fushan to discuss Stephen A. Smith and his rise to, in, to become the top earner in sports media, which is quite something. He seems like an asshole, Ooh, <laughs> to I'll... pardon my French. I don't think he's an asshole. I think in sports, when athletes have now become this larger than life, uh, with media in their face all the time, voluntarily being on social media, but also realizing how much wealth and value they create and wanting a piece of it, uh, you know, I think you need special characters to be able to go head to head and cover that. I don't know if it's an asshole or not, and I don't think it's an, yeah, it's kind of like that's his shtick, that's his act. It's kind of like this tough persona where like nobody is. Is he, like Colbert? Well, no, Colbert. I think was like a character. It was like okay. a, you know, it was like he was in in performance, in role. What do you call it? in character? In character. But yeah. but this is not in character. He's just a character, right. you could say. But but, but he's like rough. Don Cherry. Yeah, like the, like Don Cherry, like many others who are kind of abrasive and uh, like Gene Simmons. That's a good analogy. Yeah, but isn't he like that? <laughs> What? Listen, isn't that just Gene Simmons? Well, that's what I'm saying. Stephen A. Smith. That's I know, but okay, like. but. Ugh. The article that you sent, which I'm sure is from the, Simmons when he's yeah, sorry, from the Guardian though, they had a clip to an old interview from his Alan show, Iverson? the Alan, yeah, the and first one. He quite seemed, frankly, yeah, he didn't seem like he seemed like he could parallel Iverson in terms of I don't know, because right now he doesn't give a f anymore. Whereas yeah. then it was like I still I'm a black guy. You know, I, how much can I push this? It's already going to be a bit. I know, out but there. that was good content. It was good content. Okay, so you know, there's this myth of like the entrepreneur, and sometimes people feel like, oh, they'll change after a while. And I go, no, 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 no. Whatever tendencies that they had, they lack the self. And I know I'm an entrepreneur, but I try to kind of take a step back and be like, how do I not become a douche? Basically, um, I think people who are successful, what gets them successful. Those things are usually amplified, the good and the bad. If you are really, really trying not to be a horrible human being, you kind of ask yourself, how do I not go to the extreme? How do I balance these traits? It's very rare. So what you saw Stephen A. Smith in that, quite frankly, episode one with Allen Iverson, you saw hints of what then became amplified, like a shadow. And so now he's gone full tilt and it works for him, right? So I, I know, but I, I would argue got that job it worked security? originally. Sorry? It worked Originally, like it was good content. Yeah, he got, but then you he get, got you, Iverson to open up, which is famously yeah. difficult. But to what do. happens? Then you get the imitators, you get the haters, yeah. and what happens is you have to just kind of build this shell, and you have to build these layers, right? Uh, again, not comparing myself to Stephen A. Smith, I hope at all. But I myself, the way I do it is like now I get a lot of people coming up to us, asking to partner. So at the core, I want to remain just as open, open-minded you know, give back as much as I can, time, energy, even funds, resources to help others. But you can't be naive. You have to kind of at least be a bit more, you know, filtered and a bit more like, hey, people are out to kind of take you out or they're steal your thunder. If you are Stephen A. Smith, there's somebody wanting your job right now. The same way that there's a linebacker that isn't happy that the starting linebacker gets injured, but he's like, hey, that mofo's on a stretcher. I'm going in. He's not getting back on the turf, right? So you got to be careful. Now, it's funny you mentioned that, and I totally get it. If you watch that, that's what jumps out. What jumped out at me was how he apparently was like, and this is a, there's always a success story that takes years in the making. You know, people often come to me and go, "How did Watch Mojo get in this position where you never raise funding from outside investors? You could deficit finance content, yada yada." And I go, "Well, we got to this position of building a big audience because it took us six years of losses." And then they go, "Well, how did that happen?" I've also said we did everything other than corporate videos, weddings, and bar mitzvahs because that's production. It's not really building a media company. And I never want to lie and take away the fact that I started the company with a quarter million dollars, which was what I'd made at my previous job as a minority shareholder and through the commission that I made through sales. The takeaway there is not just that in Montreal that is a huge sum of money, though in New York it's nothing. It's that you have to put yourself in a position to even become an entrepreneur, to then be able to succeed. I twice coming out of school studied finance. Ooh, look at me, I'm gonna be the CEO of a bank. Not quite. I had to swallow my pride and take a job that I did feel, I mean, not literally, but that from an outsider's perspective, they could have said, well, isn't that beneath you? And I didn't feel that way at all. 
but they could have, I could have easily said, well, I studied finance, I should be doing this. This is beneath me, I wouldn't do this. So I swallowed my pride. In fact, I was pride, uh, proud to accept the job. And I took a pay cut and I went and I started this position. And then I grew, grew, grew very quickly, more responsibilities, more money. And then again, I took a job which was nice title, but was less pay. So I was kind of just putting myself in this position because I was like from where I was starting, I didn't even know I wanted to start a business, but there was no way that I could see that as a one-step process. So this concept, and I've repeated this to many, many people who come to me out of the woodwork asking me for advice, I think a lot of people want this kind of silver bullet overnight Hail Mary where within one move you're like, boom. It doesn't work like that. So Stephen A. Smith, if you read the article, I came across it on LinkedIn, but then as, I was, as we were digging to do the story, there was a, the Guardian article. It's the fact that for years he was doing things for free. He was sending in tapes, you know, rejection upon rejection. And it's not like he walked into ESPN and he's like, I'm this witty guy and I got access to Alan Iverson, which he didn't, or I will. You know, so I think the takeaway for me is before you could even get in the ring and compete for Stephen A. Smith kind of recognition and money, you got to ask yourself, what is it, like, am I willing to sacrifice and do the kind of things to get in a position to succeed at what I want to do? And sadly, the answer is most people won't be able or, or want to do that. My, still <laughs> well, no, it's just, uh, my takeaway from your thing was, are you saying entrepreneurs did need to ignore the little voice in their head saying, be a good person <laughs> to become successful? No, I think absolutely being a good person helps because if uh, when we lacked money and we were uh, insolvent and basically bankrupt for all intents and purposes, the one thing I had was integrity and character. And if I told people stuff, it was it was truthful. Uh, so, so being a, uh, you know, today I read an article, I think Mark Cuban was like, hey, now it's really in vogue to be nice. I'm like, Mark, I love Mark Cuban. But what a doofus. I'm like, why is it just nice now to be nice? You should always be <laughs> decent, right? So absolutely. I think being a good human being is like required to just get in the border, you know, get in the country, get in the, you know, to, to succeed in life. Um, that's not what I meant. What I just meant was if you see a hardification of an individual, that is a natural defensive mechanism when people start to gun for you and people start to want to take you down or people come out of the woodworks. It's natural. But I think if you could, as I've alluded to, stay idealistic but lose the naivete, then you'll succeed in the long term. All right. Do you guys see any parallels between Stephen A. Smith's rise and the rise of entrepreneurs? Let us know in the comments and we'll see you next time.